She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today is Tuesday, and today is the day that we bring you tips for your work life. We want to see you succeed wildly in the marketplace, and maybe your work life is at home, meaning your chosen profession is as one who is caring for the home, helping to bring success in the home, helping to train up the next generation to succeed in the home, for those kids to learn how to manage finances, their own emotions, for them to understand people and great communication skills, time management skills, work-life skills. These are the things that every single mom and dad, honestly, are responsible for training up their next generation and leaving a legacy behind. But if your chosen profession is out of the home or in the home, doesn't matter. Today's topic is really important for you. And here's why. Well, according to some certain surveys, 50% of married couples in the U.S. experience an affair at some point in their marriage. Ouch. Listen, I've been on both sides of that deal. I have. Um, when I first married, my first got married the first time, I met a guy and I married him after knowing him for seven days. Within 30 days, he was caught in bed with his best friend's wife, and they had only been married for two weeks, while he and I had been married for 30 days. Ouch! An affair. Now, this wasn't from the workplace. This was his best friend. He took his best friend's new wife to bed with him. Yeah, that was a really, 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 really a painful experience. And then, you know, I ended up staying in this relationship. And he ended up just a few months later in Japan with another woman. And then, of course, I have $2.03 to my name and a $35,000 debt. Now, listen, I am not here to look like the um, innocent person here because then I was the adulterous person. In fact, I had been too many times horrible type of a person that I was. I wasn't even divorced yet, uh, and I was sleeping around with other people trying to get back at my husband. And then, of course, I was not a faithful woman in the early, early years of my marriage with my husband, Hans. Terrible, mean, evil, wrong, no question. But how in the world do we get into these traps? And thank God my husband has fully forgiven me, and thank God he was so honorable and compassionate and has not been an issue in our marriage at all. But he extended to me the grace and the love and the mercy that he was shown by his father, his savior, um, that came to die for him 2,000 years ago and really set a powerful example. Um, he's really the most amazing man that I have ever had the chance to meet. Uh, if it, the tables were turned, I don't know that I would have had that kind of grace, but my husband Hans did have that kind of grace. So I'm not going to be talking to you from the standpoint of those people over there. No, I was in those places before on both sides of it. And so why should we stay away from affairs? How do they they start? What are the implications of it? Like, what kind of problems does it does it bring into our lives? And by the way, if your professional life is owning a church, <laughs> don't think for three seconds that you are somehow immune to adultery. Heck, that happens in the church just as much as it happens outside of the church. So this is about our eyes being open, scales falling off of our eyes, pl- coming from a place of experience. How did we fall into these traps? Are we in a trap right now? We don't even realize we're in a trap. How do we keep that door closed? Because again, the result is it, it robs you financially. It's very enticing, but it hurts the finances. It hurts the kids. It hurts the marriage. It hurts your physical health. It hurts your emotions. It hurts your friends. It hurts your reputation. It can take years to recover from such a thing. So let's make sure that we set ourselves up to succeed in 2018 by playing to win in 2018 and making sure we're playing to win in the marketplace, in our work life. So we've got some comments from some people. Um, We've asked our viewers what their opinion was on this, what they have done to protect it, or if they have experienced it before, and and how did they recover from it. So we've got uh, Josh Dayani from Columbus, Ohio, who is an attorney. Josh, what's your experience with, um, yeah, this this, uh, workplace that seems to be a place that kind of, I don't know, produces affairs today? 
Well, I, I see it in my job all the time, and most of the time it's coming from people on the opposite side of my desk. But I think it primarily is going to start by a lack of effort uh, on the part of the both spouses at home. You know, people get married, uh, they expect life to just be great, mm-hmm. then life just happens, but they go on autopilot. They forget to to keep up the chase and keep going after each other and keeping it interesting. I mean, mm-hmm. even people, they fall into this trap of, of thinking, well, if we go out on a date night every week, then that's enough. But they're going to the same place, they're having the same meal. Watching the same movie at the same theater. It's the same thing. It's, yeah. it's, and unfortunately, that that is what leads, in my opinion, uh, to the work life, or, or at least the workplace affair is looking more exciting. Uh, mm-hmm. People just are bored at home. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So, like, how many, first of all, how long have you been an attorney? Uh, almost seven years. Okay, so in seven years, how many cases would you say that you've heard of? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't put a number on it, but I could say I hear about it easily, easily every month. Every month. Okay. And you said it's usually the person from the opposite side of the desk. So meaning they are in trouble. They got caught cheating with someone they work with. Tell me what's going through their heart and their head when when you're talking to them. What are you seeing from their perspective? I mean, from your perspective, talking to them. And it's it's odd, but a lot of times they actually blame their spouse. Um, Very little remorse uh, from what I've seen. It's almost like they feel like they've been painted into a corner. Um, and it just, I think it goes to show that, you know, we can really create just about any legal fiction in our mind that we want to uh, and blame anybody we want. But at the end of the day, you know, we've, uh, we've kind of lost our way, I think. Wow. So you're sitting there telling me that you've got someone sitting across the desk who got, who had an affair. They had an affair with someone they work with and they're sitting in front of you because obviously they're in trouble, right? So is this now turning right. into a divorce? Are you a divorce attorney? No, I'm not. That's that's kind of the uh, most interesting part about it. I I don't even practice in that area, but um, I primarily do a lot of business work and you know companies and you know issues like that. So it just it comes to me uh, kind of on a side issue, and I'm still seeing a ton of it. Wow. Okay. And so when they're when they're sitting there, they're they're blaming their spouse. What does it sound like? What are they saying that they're blaming their spouse? What is it? What words are they saying? Uh, they're saying things like, you know, he or she doesn't understand me. They've changed. They don't meet my needs anymore. Um, they're a different person. They're not any fun. We've fallen out of love. It, it's it's almost on repeat. I mean, it's the same stuff every time. Wow. And what is your answer to them? Well, I mean, I'm in that in that circumstance. I usually kind of step outside of the attorney hat and try to give them just some life advice. And I, I always encourage people to say, look. You know, don't give up on this. I mean, you know, the, the grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence. It's, it's greener where you water it. But you got to water it. So get home and, and figure it out. You know, everybody, I think, deserves a second, a third, a fourth chance as long as their heart's in the right place. And um, I do. I try to encourage these people to, to get back after it because I really believe that they change their focus. They change their effort level. Um, you know, they can find whatever it is they had, you know, before they got married. I mean, we all got married for a reason. We, we liked that person at one point, right? So, That's right. Um, I just hope they can get back to that. Man, you got a wealth of wisdom in your mouth. <laughs> That's well, awesome. I, I think I've just seen a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah. Wisdom, but I'll take it. Yeah. Man, what a trip. I mean, I think if I think whoever walks into your office is blessed, honestly, because I think you're really level headed about it. And I think you, you're speaking wisdom about it. You know, so have you have has any of them ever opened up with it with how they ended up in this affair? Oh, uh, yeah, sometimes they do. And I mean, I, I have not I've not had anybody come in my office and tell me they planned for it to happen. Mm. Um, it just it turns into one of those things where, you know, we spend more time at work than we do at home. Mm-hmm. We spend more time around those people, and if we don't guard our personal life, if we don't make sure we maintain an objective distance from those around us, then you know it's really easy to fall into those things. It really, really is. So, can you um, can you tell me like one set of circumstances you get? Because you know, there's somebody that wa- is watching this on TV or listening to it on the radio right now, and they might be in the trap and not even know it. So, can you kind of give me a scenario of what you've heard from somebody sitting across the desk who then, of course, is blaming their spouse? I fell out of love. Sure. They're boring now. Give me a scenario because it just may. I don't know. Someone's going to feel naked when they hear you say an, ex- an example of what you've heard. Yeah, no, I, I think for me, the biggest red flag I hear is um, people will, will say, this is how it starts. 
you know, they start complaining to somebody else about their spouse, whether it's a fight at home, whether they're frustrated, uh, whether their spouse has given them a hard time about whatever it is they're doing, they'll start complaining to a coworker. I mean, it sounds innocent. You think your friends, that's the first red flag. If you find yourself doing that, if that's where you are, you have to immediately stop it. You do nothing but support your spouse and speak positively about them. Wow. So that, I think for me, is where, is where, where, where it starts. But again, it sounds innocent. And nobody, at least in my uh, arena, seems to equate that to where they end up in an affair. But um, I, I think that, to me, is a real common thread. So if you're out there and you're bad-mouthing or complaining about your spouse, you got to knock that off. Man, that's dead on. Now, what kind of uh, what kind of result have you seen? Again, with that person sitting across your desk, you're a business attorney, right? So, what kind of trouble are they in? Why are they in your office? You're not a divorce attorney, but why are they in your office? Well, uh, in Ohio, in Ohio, uh, businesses count as marital property. So, you know, usually they're in my office trying to figure out: um, Do they have to buy out their spouse if they get divorced? Uh, do they have to be business partners with their spouse if they get divorced? They're just trying to work their way through all those different uh, loopholes and, and legal implications. So tell me, how much does it cost that person who had the affair? Well, we do say that love is grand, but divorce is a hundred grand. So, uh, <laughs> it's much more expensive to get divorced, uh, whether they're buying a part, you know, a spouse out or whatever the case. It's not cheap. Um, and sometimes I do have that kind of economic conversation with them, where I say, "Look, you have to realize." there's a lot more that goes into this than just your feeling. Uh, yeah. So before you take this leap and decide to go down a different path, at least from my side, understand the economic side of it because it's going to be very expensive, very painful, and it's not going to be an enjoyable experience. So how much, the, in, in, in your seven years of practice, what is the biggest amount someone has had to pay for an affair? Oh, I've seen into the seven figures. So millions of dollars? Yes. Wow. Yeah, it's, I don't care how good someone is in bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's worth that. <laughs> Millions of dollars and the crushing of your family and the yeah. the crushing of your kids. Yeah, and that to me is one of the, I mean, everything else aside, that's the most devastating part yeah. of me. Is I think, you know, you've got a family, you've got children. Yeah. Um, the impact that that has throughout the rest of their life, it, it really is massive. And not. Nothing bothers me more than when people will flippantly just say, well, kids are resilient. Kids will be fine. No, the kids will know it and talk about it for the rest of their lives. It's part of now the family story. My dad cheated on my mom or my mom cheated on my dad. It's part of the story now. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Josh. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Yes. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Cleaning out your stinking thinking. This is The Danny Johnson Show. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider Member today and get on the fast track to success. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what poverty-stricken families are dealing with in Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic needs of food, clean water, and safe housing. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming Nicaragua. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Nicaragua. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. Did you know you can take The Danny Johnson Show with you wherever you go? It's never been easier to stay up to date with the latest content from Danny with the dannyjohnson.com app. Watch or listen in the car, at the gym, 
or on the go. Download it now from the App Store and Google Play and never miss a show again. Your family, business, and bank account will thank you. Faith, hope, love, and sometimes a good swift kick. You'll find them all here. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Affairs at work. They can cost millions of dollars. That's what Josh, an attorney from Columbus, Ohio, was just sharing with us. You know, it's easy to have our hearts brought into the darkest of places. And we find ourselves in that real, real dark, dark place. And we wonder how in the world did we get ourselves there? That's what I think about when I look at a grown man, a politician, a pastor, a celebrity, or somebody that's broke who just bought an hour to have sex with a four-year-old little girl. Oh, I know you're thinking, no, Danny, that doesn't happen in America. Oh, yes, it does happen in America. Over 2,500 cases were reported last year alone of child sex trafficking. Yes, now that man has lost his way. No question. But guess what? It's not just the men. The women are actually buying time to have sex with children, too. It's not just the guys. But that's how we can get drawn into the darkest of places. And then I hope at some point we say, what in the world am I doing? But sadly, 4.5 million kids every year are slaves to sex with the slave owner collecting all the money and beating and abusing those children. Could you imagine? This is what we are capable of. And the saddest part about this, in the U.S., there's only 600 beds available to rescue these poor children who are bracing a bed, screaming out in agony of pain, screaming out of the torment of confusion. Where's my mommy? Where's my daddy? How come no one is helping me? We can stop this. We're not going to turn a blind eye. With only 600 beds available, yet here in America, we have 13,000 animal shelters available for dogs and cats. It seems that we care more about dogs and cats and their safety and their comfort than we do a poor child who's either been abducted off of the playground right across the street from you and or their parent has willingly given them over to a slave lord in exchange for money. We can fix this. Go to kingsransom.org. Again, that's kingsransom.org. Click on Rescue 1000. You'll see right in the header, you'll see a beautiful little girl's face, and it says, not for sale. Rescue 1000 kids from the sex trade. Let's do that together. You see, $14 a day for an entire year can help rescue one of these children. You can help to provide clothing, food, love, care, counseling, shelter, safety, as well as education. Having these kids learn new skills so that they can function out in the everyday life that they were supposed to have. Some of these kids have been in the sex trade since they were four years old, and now they're teenagers and don't know any other way. They may need years of help, and we are here to rescue those children. Join us on this adventure. Join us in this incredible, incredibly timely, worthy cause that I'm committing my time, my business, to helping to rescue 1,000 kids out of the sex trade. You could commit $14 a day, or you could commit whatever it is that you have. Whether it's a dollar right now, it's $1,000 or $10,000. It's $5,000 to rescue one little kid for an entire year. Let's do this together. Go to kingsransom.org. Again, that's kingsransom.org. Kingsransom.org, rescue 1,000 children, 1,000 kids from the sex trade. Let's make more beds than there are animal shelters. Please, let's rise up and not be cold-hearted and so focused on our own success that we are not helping those who clearly cannot help themselves. Again, that's kingsransom.com. 
org rescue 1000 let's do something meaningful with our lives let's do something meaningful with our money and our time and our mouth let's do this together 2018 let's play to win rescue 1000 kids from the sex trade this is your chance to do something powerful Don't miss this chance. Here on The Danny Johnson Show, every single day, we are challenging you to step up, step out, and do something great with your life. Here on the show every day, we are challenging you to win and to win big in every area of your life. This is a place you can win. Today, in fact, with us talking about adultery in the marketplace and how people get lured into affairs at work and the cost of those affairs that's simply because of a lack of focus focus on something that is powerful and you will do something powerful and you'll leave a powerful legacy behind this is danny johnson we'll continue with more right after this be sure to tell a friend about the danny johnson show it just might be the key to the breakthrough they need stay right here for more of the danny johnson show The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First Steps to Success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, I was working 60 to 75 hours a week. I was completely stressed out. I was incredibly angry with my husband. We were in over $350,000 worth of debt. By applying the strategies that Danny teaches, in the last three and a half years, we have paid off $170,000 in debt. We are no longer roommates and we no longer spend every single cent that we make. We now have made tens of thousands of dollars in passive income and investments. We are on the right track. We're traveling around the world together. And we are building homes for those who really need it. So I don't know about you, but if you want to cut back from 60 to 20 and 30 hours a week, if you want to mend some relationships, if you want to make your life more efficient and a lot more fun, and you want to be the best version of you, I highly recommend that you get registered because your life is about to change. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, first steps to success in creating Dynasty, my wife and I were really lost. We were struggling in a relationship. We were struggling financially, drowning in debt. Our relationship was really broken. We were in a bad place. We were living in two completely different states and not really honoring each other. Once we got plugged into to the community, we noticed a shift in our lives. Uh, most importantly, we came together as a husband and wife. That was the first thing we did. And when we finally came together under the same roof, things started to change. Over the past three years, we've been able to pay off over $495,000 in debt. Uh, I know my business, I've had a job created for me that increased my income by 50%. That has actually opened up the door to allow my wife and I to spend more time with each other. So I don't know where you are. I don't know if your relationship is super awesome. I don't know if your job is immaculate. I don't know if you're debt free. But what I do know is if you're not any one of those things, your next step is to get plugged into DannyJohnson.com. Go on the website, get plugged into the community. I promise you, your life will never be the same. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, I was a broke college student, drowning in debt, and I felt like the world was crashing all around me and I had bad relationships. Since plugging into DannyJohnson.com and First Steps to Success, I was able to pay off $6,600 in four months now I'm able to give 10% of my income to wherever my heart desires I actually using the skills that I learned from Danny I actually landed a job before I graduated college and I'm able to travel the world all I know is if you're serious about annihilating your debt traveling the world helping people 
and having fun doing so, I highly recommend you get registered for the next first steps to success. Do it now, don't wait, don't even think about it. If you're ready to change your life, just do it. We went to our first ever first steps to success just 10 weeks ago, and it has definitely been life changing ever since. We felt like we got hit by a two by four, but it was the best two by four because what we realized is that our priorities were clearly out of line. I had been building a home-based business and had been working 80 to 100 hours, and I realized that that is not my role, and that I had actually taken my husband's, and it was that realization that something had to change, and we immediately went home and changed everything. There was no hesitation. We said, you know what? We need to be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. And we've implemented the tools day one. We started implementing what Danny taught us, um, invested in ourselves, invested in our kids, got our priorities in line. We've now actually paid off just not quite 60000 in debt and looking at a couple more investments here as head of the household. It's been absolutely incredible. So I just encourage you, if any of this speaks to you, if you're wanting to get out of debt, if you're wanting better communication, if you're wanting to elevate to the higher level of life, get to First Steps to Success and plug into dannyjohnson.com. What multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. You flirting with your boss? Hmm? Are you? Giving the eye? Changing your voice? Are you that person who's complaining about your spouse at work to someone that you feel like you can trust? To someone that you feel like you could have these intimate conversations, the intimate conversations you wished you could have at work? Or do you have like a marriage that seems to be pretty good? You know, like most, check this out. Counseling.com reports that most people who have an affair at work report that their marriage is good. Wow. So it's, even, it's not even the marriages that become boring. No. Yeah, those definitely are susceptible. And the marriage is that, yeah, is sexless. A sexless marriage is definitely going to be driving one or both of the spouses into the arms of another person. But that even a good marriage has a chance, a high chance. Hello? That's amazing that most people who have an affair at work, their marriage was good. So we're talking about strategies to help protect that work life and the marriage at the same time. This is Tuesday where we talk about work and we give you tips to succeed and to win in the marketplace. And if your full-time job is at home and that's your chosen profession is to work in the home with your family, with your kids, taking care of the home and the finances, then friend, you have to understand that your marriage is also susceptible and there are tall tale signs that lead us into these places where we clearly do not want to go. So we've asked our viewers um, if they've seen this happen in work, if they have been, if they have made that failure themselves, how they've recovered from it, have they noticed somebody else in that direction and what they've learned from it. So we have, sorry, we have Holly Dean from Fort Worth, Texas. Holly, what say you concerning affairs that are happening at work, even in good marriages, which is really, really sad? Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Uh, yeah, so my perspective is just that it happens when we fail to make marriage a priority over our work and our relationships at work um, by letting down our guard and by thinking that it's going to make us happy. Yeah. So do you have personal experience with this? Um, in a way, yes. Tell me, I, tell me about the in a way. to my marriage. Tell me more about that. Um, so um, about a year and a half ago, my husband had an affair. Wow. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. And how did that happen? Like it from your, so what was your response to this, by the way? Um, my response to it was forgiveness. Wow. And love and um, pursuing to strengthen our marriage. Wow. Wow. How did you find out? He told me. So he just came home one day and confessed it? No, I, I mean, I asked questions. I kind of put stuff together and figured it out. Right. And so was he truly brokenhearted when he confessed that it was going on? Um, that's hard to say. Um, we're still currently separated by his choice, but yeah. Wow. So um, it's, it's been a rough road. Yeah, it is a really rough road. So, um, when you, so from your perspective, did you guys have a good marriage? 
I mean, I would say it's average. Mm. It was going through kind of a rough, rough spot at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But so, is there anything? Really is there anything that you would do different from your perspective? Okay, because you said you know it's when yeah. you know it's when we've lost the priority of marriage when marriage no longer is a priority. But you understand it takes two. Right. And because the two of you are one flesh. Right. So even if one is working like crazy and the other is home all the time. But really, what was was the marriage really the priority? And what could you have done differently to to have the marriage not be average and okay? Because Mm -hmm. average and okay is the first one in line for for uh, for an affair. They are average and okay is the first one in line for an affair. So what would you have done differently as the wife? Um, to have shielded your your marriage in the best way that you can from an affair? Um, For me, personally, it would have been realizing counseling was needed probably earlier on, trying Mm -hmm. to recognize that and seeing that need and making steps for that direction. And then um, personally for me, um, seeing the signs and pursuing my husband um, harder, <laughs> pursuing that more, making that more of a priority. Tell me, um, tell me what you mean by that. How would you have pursued him? Um, so I have, I felt like I, from my perspective, I have been pursuing my marriage. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's always a yeah. my perspective and then there's a full yeah. perspective. Okay. I, I would say, so I was making an effort. I would say as a, as a human, I have my flaws. Okay, hold on, um, hold on, hold on. Let's let's time out. You're not getting away with this. You are so not getting no, away with this. No. Okay. So when you and your husband were courting before you were married, yeah. How did you look? Um, how did I look? Did you change the way you were dressing after you got married? Did you change the way you presented yourself to him after you got married? Did you change the way you listened to him after you got married? No. So you still were looking hot? I, I, yes, I believe I was. Okay. Did he, from his perspective, what would he say? I think he would say, he actually says that he has no complaints with me, even to this day. Okay. So, so did you, did you ever nag him? Did you ever tell him he didn't make enough money? Did you ever tell him that he works too much? Did you ever tell him, do you understand what I'm saying? Did you start? Right, right. Yeah. Tell me. Um, I would say I didn't nag him. I think, uh, so I, I want you to say from his perspective. Try to see it from. I would say no. I've not nagged him. Okay. No. Then, then what? No. What did you do that you probably shouldn't have done that created a boring marriage? You said counseling was needed early on. For what? I, I'm saying that. Well, just because we weren't communicating. I think communication oh. was our big er- it was our big er- area of problem. What do you mean you weren't communicating? Well. What does that mean? I wasn't open and honest with how things either bothered me or um, things that I needed. Okay, so hold on. So hold on. This is so good. This is so good. You just ratted yourself out. (laughs) You just totally ratted yourself out. Okay, so look, 93% of all communication is nonverbal. Correct. Okay. So your nonverbal communication was saying what to your husband? Honestly, I haven't thought about that one. Ah, uh, you're you just told me you weren't happy. You there were things that you didn't like, but you wouldn't talk about it. So that means your face showed the nag. Mm-hmm. You didn't have mm-hmm. to say anything. Do you know that there's some people who fight in silence? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, right? Have you ever tried to fight with somebody who won't look at you? Have you ever had to try to have a conversation with somebody that is ignoring you? that won't engage in the conversation? Not very often. Have you ever, I said. I didn't ask how often. I said, have you yeah. ever, right? Oh, uh, goodness, I don't know. Um, we all I have. that I have. We all okay, have. Okay, maybe once or twice. I can't think of anything else to talk about. Okay, we all have, and it drives people crazy, right? So when somebody won't talk, it's fighting in silence. Mm. When somebody won't share, it's fighting in silence. And it means that there's a wall. You see, every man desires intimacy with his bride. Every man desires intimacy. And intimacy is not sex. Sex is the result of intimacy. 
Because you and I both know, oh, maybe you don't know, but you could have recreational sex that has no intimacy at all in it. I mean, have you ever heard of something like that before? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I did that. (laughs) I know for a fact you can have recreational sex with zero intimacy at all. Like your heart Mm -hmm. is not connected. So every man desires, again, okay, so this is really clear. I don't know if you uh, believe in the Bible or not, but it says that it it is not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So loneliness, right, happens when a spouse or both spouses will not communicate. You could live in the same house with somebody and be totally lonely. Yeah. So when somebody is not willing to share intimate things about themselves and someone is not trusting of the other person, that's why you wouldn't share is because you don't trust. That's Those are trust issues. Those could be daddy issues, trust issues. I've been hurt before, so I'm not letting you in. A man can sense when his wife's guard is up, when his wife's walls are up, and whether or not she is all in in that relationship. So in this case, it's nagging in silence. He's yearning to break through to get to your heart, but couldn't get through. Mm -hmm. This is perfect breeding ground for an affair. Absolutely perfect. He keeps trying. He's not breaking through. She won't let him in. And this happens vice versa. Now he says, forget it. It's not worth it. His guard is up. His walls are up. There's no intimacy. You keep trying to get through. He keeps trying to get through. All we got is a big, thick wall. Mm -hmm. And again, where there's no intimacy, that is absolute perfect fertile ground for an affair, is looking for an intimate relationship with somebody else. And it always starts with talking. Always starts with talking. Sex is actually after intimacy, not before So something to think about moving forward of like, well, if I were to take personal responsibility for my part in the us part of it, what could I do different? And how could I help other people not walk down that same road? This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Stay right here for more of The Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. Hey everybody, my name is Digby and I'm from New South Wales, Australia and um, I'm here live at First Steps to Success. I've been to six events now and my journey started with an encore in Brisbane and after doing two encores in Australia I just really had to come to a live event so here I am today. Um, And since um, attending an encore and um, getting involved My income has doubled and my family life is just blossoming. So you have to get that. You just have to experience it. So um, four years ago in July, we showed up to our first Danny Johnson event, our first first steps to success. And we were completely desperate in every area of our life. At the time, I thought it was just because of our finances, but then I figured out pretty quickly that it was because of my lack of people skills that we were where we were. Um, we, we sat in the front row, we got fr- um, fast track, we sat in the front row, right in the center next to some amazing people because we, um, we were so hungry, so desperate, so broken, and I pretty much cried through the entire event, honestly. And um, when she did the, the war on debt, um, which she will show you, you know, this afternoon, I went back immediately and got it. Um, She had just started talking. I heard a couple stories and I was like, if they can do it, I know we can do it. So we went back and got it and listened to it on the way home in the car because we drove from Michigan all the way to, um, to Missouri. So we listened to it in the car and when we got home, we immediately got our papers out. We wrote 
down our plan and we started applying it. And within 14 months, we paid off over $62,000 worth of debt. Um, we never in a million years thought that was possible. Um, there's so much that has happened in the last four years. And um, I'm the person that wants the results immediately. I don't like the process of getting there. I want to just get there. But I've learned to appreciate the process um, over the last four years and just seeing the transformation that has happened in us. Uh, personally, we, we individually experienced different things and we experienced a lot of things together. I was paying our bills. I was um, completely disrespectful to my husband and didn't really know how bad it actually was. And um, so that, has, that part of our life is still improving. I can say we're a work in progress. It takes time and we have grown so much. Uh, we showed up, my wife, I didn't know this at the time, but she was battling thoughts of suicide. I had no idea. Um, I thought I was being a perfectly good husband. I did my best to serve her, you know, be a great guy. But what she needed was somebody who would step up and be a leader in our marriage. That's not who I was. And I was totally emasculated, physically emasculated by, there was someone in our church, the pastor, and so, we felt the brokenness of a church having to leave and just hurt, you know, and devastated. Um, one of the biggest breakthroughs started in our marriage is when Lucy started being a wife to me. And I, as a leader, I should step up right, take action first, be the initiator. She did it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a completely different person. And I can tell you, our marriage has just it's, it's amazing the difference between her feeling suicidal, me stepping down as a leader, to me taking the initiative and just looking her in the eyes and saying, honey, thank you for allowing me to be your leader. And she just melts every time. This is awesome. So. So let me just tell you this, guys. If you're struggling, or you're broke, you're wondering what your next step is, Hey, just take action, right? Follow those notes that you just took. Take action and do it because your story is going to be here and people are going to be inspired by your story. So are you all ready to take notes? All right, let's do this. Help me welcome Miss Danny Johnson, America's favorite millionaire to the stage. The way you look at things is about to change. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. So you're doing the right thing with understanding counseling is important to actually break in and find out, man, what is this intimacy thing? Because it's a real thing. And there's healing that's going to come to you personally as a woman as a woman from this horrible, horrible thing. In fact, I want you to stay here for just a second, okay? Because I want to talk to you about this. Okay. Okay. What? I am like sweating like a pig. It's dripping down my back. Okay, here we go. You know, both sides of an affair are so very, very painful. Very baby, I've been on both sides of it, and it is horrible. It's like it's like being gutted. It's like you were a deer, you were shot, and you were being gutted, or a fish that's being gutted. There's no feeling like that feeling, and I'm really, really proud of Holly for having the courage to call and share her experience, and she felt that gutting that happened when her husband confessed the affair to her, and even maybe feeling a little bit gutted even right now. Um, Holly, I, I just want to tell you that I am really, really proud of your courage um, to call in and to share your experience. I'm also mostly proud of, of you for being willing to look from a different perspective because the last thing in the world you want to do, Holly, is let's just say that, that let's say that the worst thing that can happen is that you and your husband are not going to end up back together, which I think would be horrible. And I know that's not what you're praying for, but that's the worst thing that can happen. Then you end up in a relationship with someone else. And do you want to repeat this again? Or even if you and your husband got back together again and it repeats again, do you, you, I'm sure Tell me whether you do or not. Would you want to repeat this again? Goodness, no. No, it's too painful, right? So one of two yeah. things happens. We get more guarded. We build more walls, right? Which, again, is hurtful to the relationship. But the only way 
to have healing come is to just bear your soul and your heart with complete trust. You said you believed in the Bible. And loneliness is what causes people to have affairs. And loneliness has nothing to do with sex. Nothing. It has everything to do with the depth of conversation that we allow each other to have. And whether or not we allow each other to express their feelings and we don't get all caught up in a crazy outfitted anger, like rage, two-year-old temper temper tantrum because of how someone's feeling, but that we're able to let somebody in and we're able to not walk in arrogance or pride. You did this, you did this, you did this, but it's more of, hey, we are hurting. And when our husband isn't feeling that intimacy or he's feeling drawn out by another woman, it's like, hey, we, our marriage is hurting. And I want to do my part that I maybe should have done or could have done differently to make that right. And so it might be a good conversation to have with your husband of just saying, please forgive me. I realize that I didn't let you into the intimate places of my heart. And I didn't know that I was supposed to. And um, yeah, I'm going to work on that. You know, like you said early on, you saw that there needed to be counseling then it's like, I should have went to counseling a long time ago, but I was waiting for us to go to counseling. So I'm going to start working on that. I'm going to work on me and being a better yeah, that, person. Yeah, that's definitely a conversation that we have already had. Good job, girl. Good job. So have you taken the steps? Yes. Have you had those intimate conversations? Yes. Are you going to go deeper? Yes. Good job. Proud of you. That's incredible courage. All the while, while you could ever call in and express all this stuff. You're amazing. You're really amazing. I'm really proud of you. Okay, we've got uh, AJ from California. AJ, um, what about you? What's your experience with this topic? Well, I married a woman. I I brought, I didn't marry. She was here on a tourist visa. I married her, um, both Christians. I met her through my sister. Mm -hmm. Um, She... Um, got a job working in a ministry. I've been in construction all my life. Mm-hmm. And um, I had issues with in our marriage and her employer was a friend of mine since childhood. Mm-hmm. And he's probably 15, 20 years older than me. And so I looked at him as a father figure. So I, I confided him a little bit and asking advice and, you know, what do I do? And, you know, the gentleman has a large family of his own. And so I thought, you know, the perfect guy to ask for advice, right? Yeah. And so um, he told me, he says, you know, Abe, the sooner you let go of her, the sooner you'll, you'll be happy. So forwarding a couple years, um, no, about a year, um, we, we, um, the ministry had a, 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 some sort of function out of town, uh, an event. So I went with them, and he says, you know, Abe, I hope this is a, a little weekend for you, for you and your wife to bond, you know, to, to have some good time together. Mm-hmm. And uh, so two months after that, we separated. I uh, I was out of work, and I couldn't pay the bills anymore, hmm. and um, she wouldn't help me. So she went her way. I went my way. Mm-hmm. I moved to a family, her and her two children. Um moved into another apartment. And so, uh, within, within months, uh, they were leaving town together Wow! out of town, um, ministry, ministry purposes. Uh, however, on Facebook, there were pictures of them walking on the beach, not together, but one, you know, you know, one doing one thing and, you know, just taking pictures of each other. Wow. And I, I later went through her phone cause her, her phone had a problem. So she said, she says, hey, can you take this to the phone company, find out what's going on with it? Mm-hmm. So I went through her phone, and I found other pictures <laughs> that I, I just I thought were a little bit awkward, you know? Mm-hmm. And now I can't say that there was an affair, but, you know, mm-hmm. they, the, the old saying where there's smoke, there's most likely flames. Mm. Um, and so I know, um, like, when we, when we were dating, uh, I'd get in the car, and my elbows would be dry, you know, a little crack maybe, and she, she'd pull lotion out of her purse, and she'd put lotion on my elbows, and I thought... That's kind of annoying, but that's maybe her way of loving me, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so um, there was a text from her employer saying, hey, my elbows are dry. Mm-hmm. And so she responded with lubiderm and, you know, drink lots of water. Mm-hmm. 
And so I'm going to assume that she had done the same thing to him, hmm. you know, putting lotion on his elbows or whatever. Hmm. Or why would he text her saying, hey, my elbows are dry? Hmm. That's you a know? strange thing to text your employee. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot more. I could sit here for hours talking about all the stuff that I've seen over mm. the years. But it's a ministry-based. Um, and mm. my wife and I, um, our sex life was always absolutely awesome. Mm. And it had been, for the most part, even recently. I've been separated for five years now. Mm. Um, this is my first marriage. I'm her second marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, in my heart, it's it's been till death do we part. Mm-hmm. She's been asking for a divorce for five years. Mm-hmm. I'm now disabled. I mm-hmm. am a pre-med student uh, doing the prereqs to go to medical school. Wow. Wow. So let me ask you a question. Um, you know, you just heard everything that I was talking to Holly about, right? Yes. And so, um, you know, in a marriage, it takes two, right? So if somebody is, you know, if a woman is rubbing the elbows of her boss and, you know, taking pictures of him and he's taking pictures of her, you have to ask yourself, what part in this mess did I have? Because it's an Um, us. Do you understand? It's an us. The two became one flesh. So it's not just her. Now, what she's done or what you're assuming she's done or what you're thinking she's done, I'm sorry, like taking pictures of another man like that is no. And, you know, getting a getting a text, you know, my whatever's are dry. I mean, I shouldn't say that my elbows are dry. Um, This is just very like not cool. Like this is crossing a boundary that should not be crossed. I mean, that's just to me would be common sense, but to others, it's not common sense. So we can we can point the finger and all that stuff. But what I want to ask you is, have you yet come to that place? Because you said you were Christians. Have you yet come to that place of saying, Father, show me. Show me where I missed the mark here as a husband. Ask that question. uh, Because the only way to get healed from it and to prevent it the best way that you can moving forward, to secure the relationship, to protect it as the husband. Your job is to protect that marriage, to protect her. You really want to, like, really search this out because whether it works out with her, you don't want this to happen again, or if you end up with somebody else, you don't want that to happen again. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Don't go away. The next segment might just change your life. This is The Danny Johnson Show. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what poverty-stricken families are dealing with in Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic needs of food, clean water, and safe housing. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming Nicaragua. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Nicaragua. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider member today and get on the fast track to success. 
I just heard this amazing story. One of our clients had written us telling us that they had used job domination and unlimited success and has absolutely exploded their career. He said, Danny, I don't know where I'd be today without job domination and unlimited success. Listen, do you want more recognition from your coworkers? Do you want to be recommended to people all over the world? Do you want to be somebody that is highly sought after? Listen, if you're in a dead end place where this gentleman found himself, but then learned new strategies and changed everything in his work life, and obviously this has resulted in higher bonuses and pay raises, you're next. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Job Domination right now. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880, job domination. That's what you need. It's time for you to dominate the job market and break through the rut that you're in. Helping you become all you were meant to be. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. The bottom line is this. That if you want to succeed in the marketplace, you've got to come to a place of no longer looking at what they did. You've got to look at your part in the mess. We all have a part in the mess. And it's a really hard thing to see. It really is. You know, for years, I thought my husband was to blame for a lot of things. But man, on the other side of this, when I watched him take personal responsibility for his part of the mess, um, it really highlighted so many places where I was so arrogant and I was so judgmental and I had accused him of things and I had nagged him with my lack of communication or my eyes that would communicate something very different than my mouth, that I had a part in the mess of our marriage I had a part in the mess of my first marriage. And it isn't until we take personal responsibility and we stop looking at what they did and we start going, okay, I need to become more self-aware. What could I have done differently? Not in response to an affair, but just how can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? How, what needs to change in me so I can move my life forward and be a better husband, be a better wife, be a better coworker at work? And so we've talked about a lot of stuff today, and there are some traps out there at work, and there's some traps at home. So a few of the tips that were talked about today, man, I would be taking these suckers like real close to home and come to the place of real personal responsibility because affairs are expensive. It's like being gutted out, like an animal being gutted out. It's like shattering your very soul that when you first hear about it or you or you find out about it or you catch it, it catch your spouse in the act. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. And the implications on the family are so painful. And it's something that can follow you for generations. No joke. For generations, it can follow you. What I know about my grandfather on my dad's side is he had five different women, five different families. That's his legacy. That's his legacy, that he was abusive to my dad. He was abusive to his wife. He was irresponsible. He very proudly just gallivanted around like a peacock impregnating many women. That's his legacy. Is that the one you want? Is that the one you want for your family? No. So each partner, in my opinion, needs to do the right thing and taking personal responsibility and their part in the us, the marriage, so that we are not being enticed out in the marketplace. And man, I'm telling you, AJ said it best. His wife was in ministry. His wife's in ministry and being pulled into places that she should not ever have been pulled into. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's profound. So don't think for a minute that getting married and having a boring, okay marriage is going to somehow proof your marriage from affairs. It's not. You got to invest time into that. You got to pursue better. You got to allow your heart to be opened up. You got to allow intimate conversation versus how was your day? It was good. How was yours? Oh, it was fine. No, that's just, that's like, that's what you say to the person checking your groceries at HEB at your grocery store. That's the surface conversation. I'm talking about the deeper stuff. That's what I'm talking about. That brings great love and trust in a relationship. This is Danny Johnson. Thanks so much for joining us today. Please share today's show with everyone you know. We all need it. This is Danny Johnson. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to DannyJohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted.